Sometimes we call our colleagues uh, colleagues, and sometimes when we're out there in the field, we're called each other competitors. But in fact, when you look at the pie, the, the growing pie of international students, it's clear that there's lots of room uh, for us all to be seeking uh, talented students all over the world. And the challenge will be finding enough seats around the world to accommodate all of the students who want to study internationally. Um, there was just an article in today's uh, uh, Times of India, a survey that was done of high school students in India and found that the great majority of high school students in India plan to study outside of India for some part of their career. That's a lot of students and there's going to be a, a lot of opportunity for them to come to the United States, uh, to the UK, to Australia, to France, to Germany, and to every other, and to China, and every other country that is uh, seeking international students. So let's uh, focus in a little bit more on China. Um, Last year, to, rather 2008, 2009, 7% uh, increase in international students coming to China. And then drop down to the bullet below the line, and you see 229,000 students from China studying abroad in 2008, 2009. So suddenly, in 2008, 2009, more students were coming into China than leaving China. That's a big shift. And it shows something about China's strategic decision to become a host uh, for the world's students and also to keep sending its students abroad. Uh, as I said, um, the uh, students coming into China came mostly from South Korea, the United States, and Japan as the top three countries. Uh, going out of China, the uh, destinations were the US, Australia, and the UK. The fields in which people come to study in China are interesting. Arts and humanities, which includes language study, of course, so a large number of people, particularly from South Korea and Japan, coming to study Chinese language often come to study it for uh, reasons of uh, business and economic ties. Uh, medicine, you're wondering, are all of our surgeons being trained in China? Not necessarily. This also includes traditional medicine. Many, many people come to study acupuncture and other traditional medicine forms. And business and management. And that one, I think, you'll see starting to grow. Uh, already, we see many American programs setting up to look at uh, how to uh, do international business in China. Generally, uh, lots of things are happening in this field. I, I'm not going to take time to go through all of them, uh, but maybe we can discuss some of them in the Q&A session. Uh, increased recruitment by emerging host destinations, not just China, we're also looking at uh, Singapore, we're looking at uh, India, we're looking at uh, Thailand, Malaysia, uh, many countries in the, in the Gulf states are setting up uh, programs to attract international students from around the world, and particularly from India uh, and from Asia, other countries in Asia. Uh, we're seeing the expanded host, uh, home country higher education sector. So major sending countries like China and India are also rapidly trying to massify their higher education systems so that they can accommodate the growing numbers who are getting out of high school expecting a college education. And at the graduate level, more and more US trained graduate students are going home to become faculty in those institutions. And so they're getting, passing on a US style education to their students as well. Uh, the, of course, economic and social and other policy changes in the key host and key sending countries are going to affect this mobility in different ways in different countries. Um, an important trend, I think, is that we no longer really can talk about brain drain, uh, except in Africa, where this remains a very serious problem. But in most other countries of the world, people are moving around. Um, they start in their own country, perhaps in high school or college. They go somewhere else for a graduate degree. They may go to a third country uh, for their uh, professional, uh, beginning professional work. They may move back and forth between the US and the home country. Um, it's really a, a very um, uh, multinational and diverse flow. Uh, several of these topics are going to be talked about in our new uh, Project Atlas publications coming out, one in December, one in January, and one in February. So stay tuned. It will 